because uh, nootropics, if you want to uh, really start enhancing your ability to make a bigger impact on your patients who have dementia, brain fog, any type of uh, cognitive decline, uh, or, or then you've got the flip side is you have those patients who are more transformative and they're looking to really get the most out of their their life experience because you know we are, for all we know we may just have one shot at this thing well nootropics can be one of the best ways that you can actually get them to expand their ability to perform their ability to think more clearly make better decisions i mean i wish everybody who came in as new patients into my my practices i wish they were all on nootropics so that they could think clearly and now Nootropics is an umbrella term for a class of chemicals. Now, some nootropics um, have been around for a long time, since the late 60s, early 70s is when the, the uh, racetam family was, was invented. And um, some nootropics are, you know, the FDA has looked at them, and they're not fully a natural substance, but they're also, they're not a legend drug, so they're, there's really, um, it's kind of loose regulation. The FDA has really never taken a stance on them because they fall into their own category. And it took me a long time. I mean, I researched nootropics for about six months before I ever tried it. Um, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't doing something that my brain would get dependent on or something that would deplete other functions. So for those of you who are brand new to this, this topic, um, don't be alarmed. I've, I've, I've been using them for three years, and the only thing that's happened is um, I, I scratch my skin a lot, and I don't sleep at night, and I'm very fidgety, and I pull my hair out. But otherwise, they're totally <laughs> safe. <laughs> now, I'm joking. Wait, there, there's, um, there's really no negative side effects that I found, and if you use them properly, um, I've been amazed. I mean, I've been, I've been able to produce more in the last three years than I did the former 30 years of my life. All right, so let's jump in. Uh, nootropics. Um, what you're going to find is um, uh, nootropics are going to give cognitive benefits to the human brain. Um, nootropics are, you know, they're called smart drugs sometimes. You'll hear Tim Ferriss and Dave Asprey talk about nootropics. Uh, we talk about stacking nootropics together. So at our boot camp, it looks like there's quite a few of you on here who, and welcome everybody. Quite a few of you on here who did not attend our boot camp. I don't think anyone on this presentation. Oh, Dr. Jones is here. He he uh, experienced our amazing boot camp. But if you look at this, we had natural stacks there. Um, I talked about my favorite and the most common nootropic on the planet, which is caffeine. Um, Siltep is another one of my favorite ones. So there's different things that we can look at, and we're going to cover my favorite nootropics today. But remember, as you go through these, your patients are going to love you when you help them turn on their brain. Uh, we had a patient in one of our, uh, well, I was teaching one of my, my wellness classes on brain health, and it was boosting brain health. And in one of the, the final exercises, I show participants how to actually engage the left and right hemispheres of their brain if they're feeling sluggish or if they want to really start amplifying what they're doing. And when I first taught this patient, her name's Ann, I, I, I saw her two months previous and she came to the brain health class because she had pretty severe dementia. And she came two months later to the same class and I had her do the same exercise and she did it without even thinking about it before I'd have to grab her hands and physically move her hands. And because you guys can't see me, I can't show you the exercise, but one of the ways that we helped her the most is we fixed her gut, because remember, your gut's your second brain. Um, but we also gave her some nootropics that were incredibly powerful. So um, Dr. Cornelieu uh, Guergia, I don't think I'm pronouncing his name right at all, he's the inventor of the term nootropic. So this is what he looks like. Um, he, he determined that there's five criteria that must be met for something to be deemed a nootropic. Now, the first one is it's got to enhance memory and your ability to learn. So the second one is it's got to increase the efficacy of neuronal firing. So if you guys remember some basic uh, human anatomy, the, the neurons are, and the synapses is in the neurons are what causes the uh, the different laying down of acetylcholine which is one of your main pathways for memory for example 
or the neuronal firing can secrete dopamine if you want a reward center and you start to feel really good. Um, that's where serotonin is fired. So nootropics got to increase that neuronal firing. That's almost like getting your engine. It's got to uh, improve the, uh, the increase of, of, uh, of energy. Um, it's got to help brain function under disruptive conditions. So what are disruptive conditions? Well, that's when you're under massive stress or you've got deadlines or maybe uh, these disruptive conditions are when you've got hormonal dysregulation or even gut dysregulation. Um, one of those is hypoxia so, uh, or electroconvulsive shock. If you think of hypoxia, what causes the diminishing or the breakdown of memory is the inability for your blood to circulate properly in your brain because if you look at your brain it's, it's one of the most complex yet uh, efficient organs in your body. It weighs about three to three and a half pounds depending on the size of your head and your brain is using about 20 percent of your electrical energy when you're awake. So right now you guys, your brain is using for that tiny little organ that's you know maybe three to you know two to three percent of your overall body weight. Um, yeah, that tiny little organ is using most of your energy. When you're asleep, your brain actually uses twenty five percent of the electrical energy in your body. So very very busy. But a nootropic is something that's going to help your brain even if you have this hardening of arteries, which is one of the main reasons why people get dementia or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Even if that hardening of the artery shows up, what's going to happen is a nootropic will actually help break open some of those vessels. And that's one of the exercises we ask our patients to do is hold your head, try, try for about two minutes every day and have your head below your heart. Maybe you put your knees on a chair. So why don't all of you do that real quick? Just put your knees on a chair and let your head hang below your heart and just really push a bunch of blood into your head. And what you're going to find is that's going to open up those micro capillaries and you'll start to have better function, better oxygenation. But nootropics can help this as well, but you can do your own thing right there. So the fourth thing that, um, that has to be has to meet the criteria for nootropic. It's got to be virtually non-toxic to humans and possess few to no side effects. So that, that sounds pretty good. That's one of the reasons the FDA is like, well, we don't know what this is because it's, uh, it's not like a pharmaceutical drug where there's a lot of adverse side, side effects from it. The biggest thing that you'll find is you have to be careful where you source your nootropics from because certain nootropics in the racetam family they, they get sourced from overseas. There's very few companies in the United States that make this and they can have heavy metals in them. So it's one of the reasons we use Powder City. They are, they're very safe. Um, Natural Stacks is going to be uh, on our podcast pretty soon and they will be talking about um, some different ways that you can source um, really good like aniracetam or or oxyracetam, paracetam, nopep, some of those racetam families. The fifth thing, and I think this is one of the coolest, is it protects the brain from chemicals and physical assaults. Now, if you think about the chemical assaults in our brains, you know, that's the aluminum, that's the mercury. Mercury gets stored in our brain. Aluminum gets stored closer to your cerebellum. All these chemicals have a massive impacts on our brain. The aflatoxins, and the physical assaults, that, that can be the, the traumatic brain injuries we've had. That can be the post-traumatic stress disorder if you've ever been you know, abused or assaulted or you've had uh, chronic stress. Uh, maybe you, you have um, you know, been through some pretty harsh things in life. This can help um, protect the brain from those things. So it's something that I look at it and I say, man, I want my brain functioning really well. When I hit 150, um, I want to be able to um, articulate, talk, cognate. I want to be able to contribute cool ideas into the planet. Um, so nootropics, you know, that's in my wheelhouse. So a nootropic or cognitive enhancer. A lot of people say, well, is a nootropic just a cognitive enhancer? Well, if you think about it, Look at this, a cognitive enhancer is any substance that contributes to the amplification of the mind's core capacities. Most of the time when people use nootropic, they really mean cognitive enhancer. So 
they're pretty much the same thing. And if you think of a cognitive enhancer, what's the number one most prescribed cognitive enhancer right now? Well, it's Ritalin and Adderall. And those have been around for uh, quite a while, at least 20 years. And those are basically uh, synthetic versions of um, amphetamines, you know, like cocaine, meth. Um, and the problem with using Ritalin or Adderall is the ability for your brain to recover is weakened. So your brain actually atrophies in the process and you need a stimulant to speed things up. And so when you're using a stimulant, that starts to take away from other neuronal processes. So you'll have certain depletion of neurotransmitters and then you'll lose receptivity because if you think about it on your nerve endings and on your neurons, you've got different receptors for dopamine, receptors for anandamide, for oxytocin, for um, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and when you start using drugs um, like cocaine, like heroin, like um, whatever the drugs are, um, ecstasy, then you start to really diminish the receptivity of those receptor sites. So over time you just need more and more and more and more. With nootropics, I have not found that. I actually found that early on when I first started using nootropics, I needed more than I do now to get the same effects. Actually, now I can I can go days without nootropics and I don't even notice um, a sharpness. And then, you know, I, I notice when I, you know, I've gone a month with no nootropics and I didn't notice much of a cognitive decline, but I noticed a massive application amplification when I started using them again about a month later. And now I use a lot of natural nootropics. I cycle them, so um, we're going to get into that in just a second. Um, something that does benefit thinking in some way, but doesn't meet the more rigorous requirements of Dr. Gordier. So here's some things. The substance has cognitive enhancing properties. These are nootropics. Its mechanism of action does not deplete mental or physical resources. So these are some, some other criteria. So you don't want something that's going to be borrowing from you biochemically. So let's jump into these. Favorite nootropic in the world? Coffee. Uh, how many of you drink coffee today? Um, I love this. It's, sorry it's blurry, but it basically says how I know coffee's working. And the little blue sliver you can see in this graph is I feel more energized. And the red, I work harder. And then the, the brown is I have to poop. So <laughs> I think uh, we've all experienced that. Okay, let, I mean, yes, coffee is one of my favorite nootropics. Make sure you're doing bulletproof coffee. There's incredible benefits um, not only for your gut with the uh, butyric acid, tryptine fatty acids when you put butter in your coffee, um, but you also, what you get is you get your brain feeding on ketones, which I would have to say a ketogenic diet is one of the most powerful things you can do to your brain. So for those of you who have never been in ketosis, you can, you can get um, ketone sticks that are very easy where you can, you can test uh, your body if you're in ketosis or not. There's also um, a breath test that I have, um, and I, uh, it's a, it's a ketone. It's a ketone. It glows. It glows a certain color when when you blow into it. I used to get a, a, for a couple of years ago when I was practicing ketosis. I wanted to like really get the science behind it, and I bought one of those uh, machines. I wish I had it here in front of me because I can't remember the name. Apparently, I need some more nootropics. Um, Okay, let's talk about my favorite. So, paracetam. One of my. This is the very first nootropic I tried. Um, Cade. Uh, I actually uh, gave some to Cade about three months after I tried it. Really lit that guy up. Uh, <laughs> you remember that, Cade? Yeah, my my brain felt like I was humming. <laughs> it, didn't like, finally yeah, I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't eat anything and for like all that day. We were doing a training and yeah, my head it wasn't like a headache, it was just like uh it was overstimulated. So my yeah, mind was like yeah. I probably started him out a little too high and he didn't have any food in his belly, so <laughs> so don't start it that way. Uh, but here's some things, paracetam, increased memory. These are all, all the studies I give you, these are all, have all been um, peer-reviewed. There's, there's some amazing things. I'm just giving you the bullet points. Increased memory, improved learning, greater focus, heightened sensory function, reduced anxiety and depression, improved vasodilation, reduced brain trauma. 
one to three grams. I gave Kate about about a gram, and uh, it was probably too much the first time. So start slow. Um, Paracetam affects the cholinergic and glutaminergic receptors, both of which are suggested to play a major role in cognitive functioning. And then it uh, modulates acetylcholine, so that's where you get those long-term memories. Here's what you can see in a functional MRI. Paracetam versus placebo, the top brain is placebo. And so there's a little piece of the brain that starts lighting up, you know, I'm I've taken something, but no significant alterations. But then you can see with paracetam, multiple processing centers of the brain start lighting up. So this is um, pretty powerful. Now we'll talk about paramaracetam. Now this is different than paracetam. You do not want to take a full gram of this. You, you'll feel crazy. Um, overall improved cognition. This one's 200 to 400 milligrams higher sensory perception. I notice that when I mountain bike, if I take Pramoracetam or if I'm doing a workout, I notice that I'm uh, a little more, um, I feel more confident in my dexterity, I feel more confident in my balance. Um, it improves working long-term and, and you know, so the short-term and long-term memory. Increases learning, enhanced focus, advanced logical and technical thinking, unlocked areas of thought, it improves memory. Um, this is fat soluble, so try and take it with some fat. So best thing to do is in the morning, just take uh, 200 to 400 milligrams of paramaracetam and eat an avocado or do some bulletproof coffee. And yeah, you'll feel like a champ. Um, all right, so this works on the hip, hippocampus. Um, it has a high affinity to influencing choline uptake in the hippocampus. So the hippocampus uh, is one of the reasons why it helps with higher sensory perception and it really does help you focus longer and the hippocampus helps you know, that's that's an area of the brain that's highly developed in athletes for example um, you want to make sure with the uh, the paramaracetam or any of these nootropics is to add choline in with it and you have to exercise so we'll talk about this a little more oh here it is exercise and nootropics that's, exercise is actually the still the world's best nootropic, uh, but if you look at it, a lot of those Olympic athletes, professional athletes, they use nootropics. They don't talk about it heavily just because the FDA at any time could shut it down or the um, doping agencies could tell them they're, they, they could ban the substance. But one of the things I notice that if I don't exercise when I take nootropics, I do not sleep at night as well. I, I tend to have kind of uh, a little more restless sleep. But when I exercise and I don't take nootropics, I sleep pretty good. I'm probably around a 7 or an 8. When I take nootropics and I exercise, I sleep at like a 10. I sleep amazing. So um, remember to use this. But when you exercise, that's when you really increase your brain-derived nootropic factors. And that's when your brain really starts laying down new pathways. You can learn quicker. There's a cool study that they did where they took kids and they, they had kids that were sitting in a classroom, traditional, conventional style education. They took another group of 30 kids and they just had them running around on the playground. They studied for about two hours a day. The rest of the time was free time and there were a lot of exercise, a lot of physical activity. And guess which group of kids scored better on the final test after three months? That's right, the kids who are exercising. So pretty amazing. But racetams are your biggest nootropics. So I'll talk about some other nootropics that may not be necessary that you have to exercise that hard, but racetams are the biggest one. Okay, no pep. So no pep is you just use a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, 10 to 40 milligrams, not a whole bunch. No pep is very powerful. It was the most most popular nootropic last year. Um, this is the one that, that people seem to love, especially the engineers, people in the computer world um, love no pep, but it gives you better overall cognitive performance. It increases learning ability, enhanced memory, improve re reflexes and perception. It helps with advanced logical thinking. It improves the mood, reduce anxiety and depression symptoms. Um, and then once again, NOPEP works as a strong cholinergic nootropic that acts as an acetylcholine positive signal of the acetylcholine neurotransmitter at the receptor. So remember those receptors, uh, you want to make sure that they're very receptive to taking in these neurotransmitters and that's what NOPEP will help you do. 
it does feel really cool. You can learn things much quicker on Notepad. Um, acetylcholine is responsible for a host of cognitive functions. It's been studied in anxiety and depression primarily, and they've done really. It's it, the outcomes are pretty incredible. Um, all right, so let's move on to two of my favorites: aniracetam and nopep. So aniracetam is probably my favorite nootropic. It's the one I've used the most. Um, so two most powerful nootropics: aniracetam or Vin Diesel versus The Rock. Uh, <laughs> all right, aniracetam. So it increases learning ability and improves cognitive processing. It's heightened reflexes, heightened perception, reduced anxiety, reduced depression, recommended dose one to two grams. Now, um, I get mine typically from Powder City. Um, they make, uh, they source it very well, and aniracetam is hard to come by. A lot of you will be like, oh man, I can't find it anywhere. Um, make sure you get it from a good source, but so far Powdered City is about one of your, your best bets there. But what aniracetam has been studied with is in Alzheimer's and dementia. And we've used it with our patients with Alzheimer's and dementia and had incredible success with it. Um, you can certainly see a difference, you know, cognitively. The thing I like about aniracetam versus some of the other racetam family is I'm I don't feel sometimes when I'm on racetams I want to get through projects. I want to tackle things a little too quick, and um, and so I, I just really I want to see things come to fruition faster than is probably humanly possible. But aniracetam is very calming and so I, I don't feel kind of that urgency. Um, so yeah, this is a great one to start with. Um, this reduces free radicals and oxidative stress in the brain which can lead to degenerative diseases and neurological complications. Um, it's, it, it should not be used as a main treatment. It should only be used in conjunction with fixing the gut, fixing all the neurotransmitters, fixing the brain and there's some other things we'll talk about in a minute. So. Now we'll talk about aniracetam versus oxyracetam. Now oxyracetam is great because you can hear better with oxyracetam. That's what I've noticed the most, and I've, you know, I've, I've heard that from a lot of different sources that it does improve your auditory um, nerves, and it helps with learning and memory, better sensory perception, advanced technical thinking. But um, yeah, the hearing is the biggest thing I like with oxyracetam. So next time you're going to the club, you're going to go party, um, take some oxy oxyracetam, or maybe you're listening to one of my podcasts. Take some oxyracetam, and, and it might make my voice sound just a little better for you. All right, so um, Phenibit. Now we're jumping into uh, substances that aren't necessarily nootropics, uh, but they they work like nootropics. They help brain function, but we're going to talk about Phenibit, and Phenibit is great for relaxation, anxiety reduction, sleep induction, and Phenibit's hard to come by too. So Powder City is a great source for it. Uh, Bulletproof, they used to make um, GABA Wave, and that was kind of it. And it was very nice just to relax your whole body, relax your mind, just to get you feeling really good. Um, I love Phenibit, but do not mix this with benzodiazepines. Don't mix it with alcohol, Ativan, Xanax, Valium, none of those things. They can actually, if you mix it with a benzo, uh, it can actually kill somebody. So um, this is, you know, make sure that you understand what they're taking and you're very clear. Do not mix those things. One of the first times I took uh, Phenibit, because, you know, I've kind of experimented on myself and there's not a whole lot of concrete data out there about it, but I uh, took Phenibit and then um, that evening I was just enjoying a glass of wine and I just all of a sudden I was like buzzed and I only drank like a half a glass and the next thing I knew I had to lay down and I was in my daughter's room just hanging out with her and, and helping her organize her clothes and all of a sudden I'm, I'm like I need to lay down, sorry. And uh, it was crazy so now I realize like if I take Phenibit, I'm only doing a tiny, tiny bit of alcohol but usually I don't do any when I take Phenibit. And, and uh, Phenibit, it's a derivative of GABA, and GABA is uh, not a nootropic, but it has tranquilizing and relaxing effects, so anti-anxiety effects. You're going to feel amazing. Um, here's Phenibit versus some of the other 
uh, nootropics out there that are you know like nicotine, um, Adderall. Um, here's the problem with a lot of these these nootropics. A lot of cognitive enhancers, we'll call it, because phenobit will really increase your your ability to be creative. And phenobit, I love taking phenobit whenever I'm working on a new project because it opens up different pathways in my brain. So you, you'll be able to start seeing where the next step is, so that you know hopefully there'll be some soul in your work. Um, this is great when you've got difficult patients who you're trying to address and these patients are stuck in these chronic anxiety modes and maybe you're using buplerum and, and you're really um, you know, working on getting their, their liver calmed down, their liver chi stagnation, but in the meantime, nootropics can be, they can, they can just shortcut that whole process and you get better results faster. So here's where they compared Adderall versus nicotine versus phenobit. They found with Adderall, 69.4% had no problems. This is, you know, just like a, this is a 90-day study. Phenobit, 83% had no problems. Nicotine, about half of them had no problems. Adderall, 17.5% developed a tolerance. Phenobit, 13.7% developed a tolerance. That's why you don't want to use this every day. You don't want to use any of these nootropics every day. And then nicotine, 11.9% developed a tolerance. They just didn't notice it working. And nicotine is what most authors and writers use. Never tried it before. I'm not I'm not necessarily opposed to it as long as it's not in you know, cigarette form that's unless it's a camel stud. Um, then I'll and then I'll just go for it. Um, joking by the way, but um, nicotine is great. <laughs> I know I might please send some camel studs. I'd I'd love that. Um, but Nicotine, uh, if you look at it, 21.4% became addicted, and, and it was a minor problem. Phenobit, it was a fraction. It was like maybe 2%. Um, you know, and, and the people who had a, a major addiction with, with nicotine was 13.5%. People who became addicted to Adderall, 104 And then, once again, you can see no one had a major problem with phenobit. Maybe... I think I think my Wi-Fi cut us off. Sorry, everybody. Um, okay, so L-theanine. Um, if you look at L-theanine, I love using it with coffee. So put it in whenever you drink coffee. The L-theanine will actually help re replace some of the fatigue that coffee and caffeine can place on your adenosine receptors. So if you've ever drank coffee and you're like, man, I need another cup to get me going, and you drink it, and you may feel better for five minutes, and then you're even more tired. That means you probably need some extra L-theanine in there. So 150 to 200 milligrams is great. Um, lots of studies have shown it's been able to lower anxiety. Um, it can be used as an aid with schizophrenia. So, Cade, there's hope. Um, it also can yes. be used for ischemic neuronal damage. So that's for, due to strokes and Alzheimer's. So if you're doing like, you know, we're starting to do stem cell IVs for our stroke patients, and adding in L-theanine is a very good segue for them to amplify that, that outcome with stroke and Alzheimer's. Um, if we look at um, choline, which is uh, the next one here, choline, you always want to use it with racetams. Cytocholine is, is kind of, it's a different version of choline. It works on that intermediary effect, so it's, it's the mid-range of choline, but choline, it, it will help cross, help get the, the uh, racetam family specifically activated. So it helps, helps it cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, Cytocholine has an effect on hormonal levels. It works on your adrenal corticotropic hormones without raising the amount of stress hormones. It's effective for the HPA axis hormones without excess stimulation. So I love choline for any, any types of growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone. Choline is your best bet. And if you take nootropics and don't, don't notice anything, then what you're, probably, what you're probably doing is you're not getting enough choline. In combination with L-DOPA, and a lot of you have seen L-DOPA and, it, and it, the, effects, the side effects it has on our Parkinson's patients, it's pretty sad. But the, the choline and citicoline can really help balance that out so their, their mouth is not thrusting and they don't get kind of those jerky movements. Um, CDP choline encourages dopamine release through tyrosine hydroxylase activity. Um, this is also going to help 
create a much more receptive um, dopamine response. So choline is great if you just want to feel good, you want that reward system channeled in there. Um, let's talk about galantamine. Galantamine was removed from the market for about 10 years from the FDA. There are people who are taking way too much of it. Um, but galantamine is what you want if you want a deeper sleep and much more clarity when you wake up in the morning. So I don't know how you, how you guys are sleeping, but uh, one of the biggest things you can do is try galantamine. And it will immediately increase the duration of REM sleep. So you know your brain goes through different cycles when you're sleeping, about one cycle every 90 minutes, but that REM sleep is when the delta waves kick in, and that's when you get this massive flood of serotonin in your brain and oxytocin. So for those of you who have woken up in the morning and just felt like, wow, I just had the coolest dreams, uh, peacefully, I can't wait to tackle my day and then get back in bed again tomorrow night or tonight. That's, um, glantamine can do that for you. It can really help amplify your dream state. And we all know dreams are the way that our subconscious mind regulates itself and clears itself. And that's, that's where we can get some real deep spiritual messages is with Galantamine. So I definitely recommend um, trying the Galantamine. There's a 5.8 times greater likelihood of having lucid dreams with 8 milligrams of Galantamine versus placebo. So LeBerg is one of the premier researchers, Dr. LeBerg, in sleep. And I would highly recommend that you um, get some things from him. So we'll talk about a couple natural things. I know we're going to have natural stacks, so I won't go through all of these, but one of my favorites is Siltap. Um, Siltap, it increases motivation and mental endurance. It improves concentration, alertness. It improves moods and social ease. So if you get some social anxiety, you may want to try this. It's got artichoke, and it contains luteon, which is a safe and natural inhibitor of PDE4. PDE4 inhibitors have been shown to have significant nootropic effects including increased cognition, and improved long-term memory, increased wakefulness, and neuroprotection. So it's a great one to get your patients on. Definitely would recommend it. Um, the other one I want to talk about is serotonin brain food. It's got the rhodiola. A lot of us, we use rhodiola on a regular basis. It's an adaptogenic herb. Um, it lowers cortisol, helps uh, lower and perceive stress, to make serotonin optimally. So you can stack Siltep with virtually any any of the racetam families. I love having one or two siltap as kind of my foundation. And then if I'm taking aniracetam, I'll do a couple siltap, I'll do about a gram of aniracetam. If I'm doing no pep, I'll do the same and then I'll make sure and add in L-theanine because most mornings I'm drinking coffee. And then I'll also add in choline, of course. Choline, every day I do choline, I love it. Um, Serotonin, it's a uh, positive mood, it's the proverbial chill pill, it's healthier than a post-workout cocktail, that's for sure. Um, and then let's talk about dopamine. So dopamine, you know, it, it, that's, that's the neurotransmitter responsible for motivation, memory, creativity, alertness, and assertiveness. Um, it's got vitamins, amino acids, minerals in it, so um, dopamine is great. Jump starts your day, helps you feel more um, physically active. I, I can only, I only need this about once per week, and I'm fine. Um, serotonin, I don't do as well on the serotonin brain food because my serotonin, when I tested my neurotransmitters, it was already really high, so um, I don't need it. Dopamine, my dopamine is a little, you know, it's kind of on the mid-range level, um, so once a week I'm fine. Vitamin D3, Natural Stacks makes an incredible vitamin D3. It's got organic coconut in it. And then the last thing I want to end on is the, pro, the prebiotic. So for those of you who are not using Natural Stacks, their prebiotic is, is, you can't beat it. It's such a good source of resistant starch. And this will help heal your patient's leaky gut. It gives the bacteria something to feed on so that they can make more, more neurotransmitters. It's going to promote healthy gut flora, optimize digestive health, it regulates blood sugar, and then it's a great it's a great thing to take at night before you go to bed. So I like taking a prebiotic and a probiotic before I go to bed at night, and this is a great way to help blast your brain function out there. So 
So I, I apologize for our technical glitch today, but hopefully you guys have learned something about nootropics. We're going to be doing more training on these. Put these all in your brain health protocols. I know our webinars, we've covered hormonal health with the adrenals. We've covered thyroid health. We've covered, um, we've covered things on leaky gut, uh, inflammation, testing the stool. We've done a lot on genetics with Calm T. Um, so now we've done nutrition, um, food intolerance testing. So now you've got this in your wheelhouse. My, our next event, I'm going to be speaking, uh, I'm honored to speak for the California Chiropractic Association. I'll be speaking to uh, about 80, 80 attendees, um, 80 chiropractic physicians in San Francisco this week. Um, we'll be there from 7.30 to 11.30. It's, it's at the Hilton, one of the Hiltons there. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that event. Um, our next Go Wellness event is going to be in January. Uh, January second or maybe it's the 20th and 21st so hope to see all of you out there uh, for those of you who do not have my new book your health transformation get it on Amazon and please leave me a review that's how we can spread the word much quicker um, and yeah I really look forward to seeing you guys next year is going to be the best year yet so for those of you who aren't glow wellness clients I see several of you on here who are not we want to get you we want to make 2017 your best year yet so Kate and I are going to be available. We want to set up a time to meet with each one of you to see if you qualify for one of our signature programs. So, um, Kate, how can they get in touch with us? Yeah, so you can reach out to us at info at gowellness.com. Uh, that's info at gowellness.com. Or uh, you can even just call me or shoot me a text. My number is 435-406-1752. Um, and then I'll, I'll probably be emailing uh, each of you uh, an email just to see what, what your goals are, what, what you're looking to accomplish, and then we can at least start a dialogue on how we can help you accomplish those things. Um, yeah, and, and like Reagan said, we got our uh, next event is in, uh, in um, Marina Del Rey on January 20th weekend. So I do believe I got the calendar. So that's Friday the 20th. That'll be a, an afternoon uh, deal for the acupuncture side. And then the 21st, 22nd will be the functional medicine uh, healthcare entrepreneur program. So we are, uh, you know, we, we're always looking for people that are like-minded. So if if this, if this uh, you you like what uh, these webinars are all about, we challenge you to, to make it work 